Molly's Surprise, A Christmas Story, American Girl. Chapter 4, The Merry McIntyres. Keeping Dad's secret did not get any easier for Molly. She was jittery, jittery all day Saturday. After breakfast, when Brad rushed to the garage to get his sled, Molly planted herself like a guard at the bottom of the stairs to the storage room. Jill rolled her eyes and hissed. Move away. Molly wouldn't budge. What if Brad went up the storage room? What if he saw the box? But Brad was interested only in his sled. He didn't even notice Molly. There was another alarm after lunch when Ricky went to the garage to get a snow shovel. Molly hovered around him so much that Ricky finally gave her a shovel and told her to help out. Molly didn't mind shoveling the driveway. At least she could keep an eye on the garage without looking suspicious that way. By the end of the day, Molly was exhausted. This secret-keeping business was hard work. And there was still one whole day to get through. One more nerve-wracking day until she and Jill could reveal the surprise. The next day was Christmas Eve. Molly was on pins and needles all morning. Luckily, Mom was up in her room until noon wrapping presents. She couldn't see the garage from there. Ricky had br Ricky and Brad built a snow fort in the front yard, and they spent the morning cheerfully bombarding each other with snowballs. At last, it was time for everyone to get ready to go to church for the Christmas Eve service. As Molly put on her special green velvet Christmas dress, she felt relieved. The secret would be safe while they were at church. Molly loved the Christmas Eve service. The church was decorated with red and white poinsettias and garlands and pine and holly. A dark manger scene filled the front of the church. Everyone was given a small white candle to hold the flame of to hold. The flame of Molly's candle flickered and danced as she listened to the words of the Christmas story. And suddenly there was an angel there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, good will toward men. Molly knew everyone in her family was thinking of Dad and hoping this Christmas would truly bring peace on earth so that he could come home. Maybe next Christmas Dad will be here with us, thought Molly. She remembered how his deep voice sang out, Silent night, holy night. Molly looked down the pew. She saw a tear caught like a tiny diamond in the corner of her mother's eye, shining in the light of the candle. Molly bit her lip. Maybe we should have told her about the box, she thought. Maybe then she wouldn't be so sad. But when they walked home from church, Mom seemed happy. Their neighbors' calls of Merry Christmas were warm in the snappy cold night. They had their traditional Christmas Eve supper of scrambled eggs, bacon, hot chocolate, and cinnamon toast before they hung their stockings on the mantel. Mom read, "'Twas a night before Christmas, just as Dad read every year." They all knew that the last time that the last line of the poem was their signal to go to bed. So everyone stood up and said with Mom, Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. Then they ran up the stairs to their rooms and jumped into bed. Tick tock, tick tock. Molly's heart thudded with every tick of the clock. She was waiting, waiting, waiting for it to be midnight. At midnight, she and Jill would perform their secret mission. They would put Dad's box under the Christmas tree. Molly opened her eyes very wide. Her room was solid dark, filled corner to corner with blackness. She rolled over to her side to look at her glow-in-the-dark clock for the millionth time. 11.56. Only four minutes to go. She couldn't wait any longer. She sat up. Did her bed always creak so loudly? Slowly. Carefully, she stood up and tiptoed to the door. Sl slowly, carefully, she opened it. Boom! A white shape bumped into her. Molly gasped and the white shape giggled. It was Jill. She put her finger over her lips to signal no talking. Molly put her slippers on her feet and they both went through the hallway. They felt their way down the stairs in absolute darkness, putting two feet on each step like unsteady babies. Molly didn't even breathe until they got to the kitchen. Jill headed to the closet to get her jacket. Molly grabbed her arm and whispered, No! Too noisy! All of a sudden, she felt sort of wobbly. She moved her hand down Jim, Jill's arm, and Jill squeezed it. Molly felt better. She opened the back door and went outside. The cold bit her skin. Quickly, they dashed across the driveway, up the stairs, and into the storage room. 
This is kind of scary, isn't it? Molly whispered. Oh, I think it's fun, said Jill. It's like a ghost story. Molly shivered. Come on, let's hurry. They carried the box down the icy steps, across the driveway, through the kitchen, and into the living room, then put it under the tree. There were several tempting boxes that had not been under the tree before. Molly pointed to them. Santa Claus has been here, she said. For some reason, that made both Jill and, most, and Molly burst into giggles. They gabbed, grabbed pillows from the sofa to muffle their laughter. When they finally quieted down, they crept up the stairs to bed. Jill waved goodnight outside her door, and Molly waved back. Mission accomplished, thought Molly. She curled up under the covers, drowsy and happy, and very, very relieved. Mom! 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 was the next thing Molly heard. She opened her eyes. The sun was just coming up, and her room was rosy. Mom! she heard Brad call again as he thundered down the hall. Merry Christmas! Get up! The McIntyres had a rule that no one could go downstairs to the Christmas tree until everyone was ready. Brad banged on Jill's door, then Molly's door, then Ricky's door. When they were all gathered at the top of the stairs, Mrs. McIntyre smiled and said, Okay, go ahead. Everyone stamped down the stairs. The door of the living room, the stampede stopped suddenly. Hey, said Brad, what's that big box? Ricky pushed past him to the tree. Mom, he squeaked. It's from Dad. Look, it's from Dad. Mrs. McIntyre's face went white. From, she whispered. She knelt down next to the box and touched the label. She looked up. It's, it is. It's from your father. But how? She looked at Jill and Molly, then smiled. Mrs. McIntyre sat down on the floor. You too, she laughed. Why didn't you tell us about the box? Dad said not to, said Molly. Look, she pointed to Dad's message. Keep hidden, Mrs. McIntyre read. Just like your father, always surprises. She heard, hugged first Jill, then Molly, and Molly could feel her trembling. Well, what are we waiting for, said Ricky. Let's open it. He tore the brown paper off the box and ripped open the lid. Ooh, said Brad, look. The box was filled with green tissue paper lumps in odd shapes and sizes. Each lump was labeled. Ricky handed them out. One for Brad, one for Jill, one for Molly, one for Mom, one for me. Brad opened his bundle in no time. A canteen, he said contentedly, and a soldier's hat. I guess Santa asked Dad to get them. Ricky had a silk scarf made from a genuine parachute, the kind real pilots wore. Jill had a heather-colored skating hat, much nicer than Dolores's, she said with satisfaction. Mom had buttery smooth leather gloves. She slid her hands into the gloves and smiled as she pulled out a small white note. She seemed too happy to say anything. Oh, look, cried Molly. Everyone knelt around her as she lifted her gift out of its rustling tissue paper. Molly's gift was a doll, a beautiful doll with dark, shining hair and smiling blue eyes. Molly touched the doll's hair with one finger and traced the curve of her pink cheek. She was dressed in a nurse's uniform and hat like the one Molly had dreamed about. A smart red cape covered her starched dress and tied under her chin. Molly hugged her. This doll would be her friend, her companion in adventures, and a secret sharer of all her dreams. And when she played with her, Molly would always remember that Dad had chosen this doll for her. Even though he was far away, he still knew what would make Molly the happiest girl in the world. If only Dad could be there with them to see how happy this surprise had made them all. Well, said Mrs. McIntyre suddenly, what time do you think it is? It's exactly 7.03, said Ricky, who never took off his watch. Mrs. McIntyre glanced at the white note in her hand, then put it in her bathrobe pocket. Let's turn on the radio, she said. We can listen to the Christmas shows while we open the rest of our presents. Ricky flicked on the radio. Christmas music filled the room. Joy to the world, the singer sang, and the music was drowned out with whoops of delight as Brad and Ricky, Jill and Molly opened present after present. Molly was glad to see that not all the presents she bought were very practical. Jill gave her a glass ball that filled snowflakes when she shook it, and Brad gave her a corsage he had made out of pine cones and red ribbon. 
All too soon, the presents were unwrapped. Molly sat in a sea of crumpled wrapping paper, eating Christmas coffee cake. Brad insisted on drinking his juice out of his canteen. Ricky flung his scarf around his neck and pretended that he was a voice on the radio singing, May your days be merry and bright, and may all your Christmases be white. Then, in a scratchy voice on the radio, said, Merry Christmas, we're broadcasting from the USO Christmas party in England, and we have some servicemen here with messages for the folks back home. Here's an eager fellow. Eager fellow. What's your name, Captain? I'm Captain James McIntyre, said a familiar voice. They all stopped still and looked at the radio. I'd like to say Merry Christmas to all the Merry McIntyres, Jill, Ricky, Molly, Brad, and my wife, Helen. Molly held her doll very tight. I miss you all very much, and I hope you have a wonderful Christmas full of surprises. <clears throat> and with that, other soldiers spoke, but Molly didn't hear them. She kept the echo of Dad's voice. She never wanted it to fade. Dad, what he said was still true. There were always surprises at Christmas.